Hello, my name is Fermin. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Maxim family, the design of an Emacs, and the importance of Lisp. So we're going to talk. We won't talk about Lisp. I want to start from the end. So uh, the first question they want to ask is why I think Lisp matter. When I'm talking about Lisp here, I'm talking about the idea of Lisp. So uh, the family of languages that are, are Lisp. Uh, but given that there's no formal specification of Lisp, so the op opinion might vary, I will uh, uh, expect that Lisp, uh, most of the Lisp, have this kind of uh, features. So the first one is homo iconic. So the code is data, basically. Uh, so have a REPL read about print loop uh, that can be that is very powerful and it can and it help in the development. Also, I think a good Lisp uh, should have a powerful macro system. I'm good with compile time macros, but read time is also interesting. And there's a lot of Lisp that you can choose. There's the main three ones, of course, with the scheme, common Lisp, and closure scheme uh, by Guile, uh, common Lisp maybe by well. Common Lisp <laughs> and closure by closure or closure script. Right. Um, so let's talk about Emac Lisp. So I didn't mention Emac Lisp. So I'm going to talk about why Emac Lisp was chosen for an Emacs editor, right? So we're going to explore this kind of a uh, design of the Emacs and Emac Lisp is the main language of it. Why? So given that there were a few alternatives at the time, why Emacs Lisp was chosen? So. Hermes Richard Salman needed uh, a Lisp, and there wasn't one available at the time. Keep in mind, this is the early '80s, so um, Salman was writing at that point the GCC, I think, and well, he was uh, writing the the core components of what is going to become uh, GNU. So he needed an editor. He wanted Lisp. He wanted Emacs. So he wrote Emacs Lisp. <laughs> Um, so at that time, the um, functionality was more important than full perfection. What I mean, perfection is we well, programmers sometimes like to make everything um, well good or very very good. When sometimes indeed it's more important that it works to 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 do the the, the task that it should, right? And it's not a bad language, so it's not that bad, you know. Uh, so at that time was even mostly nice. So and today is good enough, I think. So uh, he wasn't the first one, the GNU Emacs, nor the 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 only one, of course. There were others: uh, Hemlock, Zetamax, and Climax. Three, two of them, I think, are written in Common Lisp, and the Zetamax is written in, um, in a Lisp from. Uh, Lisp machine, so it was an implementation of Emacs, not GNU Emacs, but the original idea of Emacs for um, a Lisp machine. Um, so Hemlock is written in Common Lisp, but it's no longer used and no longer developed, as far as I know. And Climax is uh, it was developed, but it was abandoned, I think. So three of them failed for different reasons. Theta Max was because of the Lisp machine market crash, and yeah, it also failed. So Emacs got alone. And in the 90s, it's interesting to explore. Some people suggest that why now that we have a, a standard language, standard Lisp, right? Because Common Lisp was standardized in the 94. Why don't we change Emac Lisp to, to Common Lisp? So these are the, the all the reasons that I think are important because that's why Stallman didn't choose Common Lisp. But I think the main one that I didn't wrote here is that Stallman wasn't a big fan of Common Lisp. So, and he was at the time the main uh, developer and uh, maintainer of course for Emacs, so he chose not to, to move to Common Lisp. But other reasons maybe why, uh, because he had a late and painful standardization. Keep in mind, the first book that uh, Guy Stilly wrote was in 1984, and the standardization finished in 19... Uh, uh, sorry, in 1984 was the first book, and the standardization finished in 1994. Uh, so, like 10 years of different from one to the other. So, 10 years of a lot of talk, a lot of money, and a lot of pain, probably. <laughs> um, uh, the Lisp 
uh, usage declined in the 90s to do to the AI winter. We all know that the list machine market crash and can, the failure of, of commercial list machine was inevitable at that point. So we you think all the potential Emacs uh, friends died. Um, and also a lot of Emacs list was already available. Emacs was already amateur uh, utility. Um, Unix won the war of the operating system, as we know. And Emacs list was available in Unix or in GNU Linux, as we know, uh, which is the most successful implementation of, of Unix. Uh, sorry, BSD. Um, okay, so Emacs won may have been the better alternative. I'm quoting better here because I think Emacs does have a better um, design and, 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 well, it was the one that survived, right? Which is the more important thing for a software or, you know, so uh, Emacs won by being free, so freedom, also in price, which I think the list machine wasn't. So that was also very good. It was including, so it, it, he, ha he had, and he still has, of course, a nice collection of packages that improve um, the standard functionality. It was easy to extend because of the nature of Lisp. And it had a very good integration with GNU Linux, of course, it was created to, to, to write it. So it makes sense that it's very good for a, a system administration perspective. Yeah. So, um, but I think commonly, Common Lisp is not dead yet. Uh, or some people say that it's always dead. So you cannot kill the something that is always dead. <laughs> so I don't always code in C, but when I do it's Lisp. I don't like, I'm not a big fan of C for a lot of things, um, but yeah. So, um, why I think common list is still relevant and can be used for all kind of application, both commercially and non-commercially. And the first one is the main implementation of common list, which is called SBCL, which is awesome, right? It's the it's fast, it's a very good, have very good extension, and basically it's the reference one today. Uh, the namespaces of common list, but I really like the implementation. Some people don't like it. It's a matter of taste, but I think are really good. I have a tameless standard, so it was standardized in the nineties, as we, as we, as, as I said, and it did. It, it doesn't really need a new standard. Some people say it does need, but I don't think so. So, also, it does have macro readers, which I think is a very nice uh, feature of Common Lisp that all the Lisp doesn't seem to have, or a lot of them don't. Uh, in my mind, Emac Lisp and um, Clojure. And also is image-based development, which is also quite unique to common Lisp. I don't, I don't know all the Lisp that does have the, that, have, that have this. Basically, you develop a REPL and then you dump the entire REPL into an image, or like a in Java would be like a core dump, or you know like, a, and you create an executable, which at the time I guess in the nineties was a huge one, right? Because you have the entire language and the REPL and the code, but today are like twenty megabits which in today's standard is nothing. There's pictures in your phone larger than 20 megabytes. So, ah, so there's a new um, Emacs in town. Well, Emacsin, not Emacs, um, which is LEM. I think it's a very good Emacsin implementation. What I mean Emacsin here is not a clone of GNU Emacs, but a Emacs inspired editor with similar characteristics and written in a Lisp which is why I said uh, that list was very important. So um, first I'm going to address the elephant in the room and the question that maybe most of you are now thinking, why not just use GNU Emacs, right? Is the uh, the, the project, so it's the, the main one, right? Well, why choose another one? So LEM is relatively new, 2018, and it can explore different ideas. It was developed by sasaki Um Basically, it was and mostly is a one-man project, but we are getting there. Um, I'm, as a, um, I'm not the maintainer; I'm a developer of them. So, um, so given that it's relatively new, it can explore different ideas, right? So you don't you're not bound to a community or a backwards compatibility. So you can explore different ideas, and I think that's always nice. Um, having multiple options creates competition, which benefits the community. So Emacs and Vim. 
com- the competition between the two always create nice packages like evil or you know um so it's really good to have a some kind of a competition healthy competition you know and it doesn't share any code base with GNU Emacs. Like I, I can, uh, I want to clarify this um, because some people think that LEM is kind of a, uh, you know, Space Max or Doom. No, uh, it doesn't share any code, and uh, this, so it's, it has zero Emacs Lisp in it. So that's it. So getting this out of the way, what I think LEM is interesting, I'm going to show uh, why LEM. So why you should you can try them and maybe you like it. Uh, first thing, one of them, this is the features that I really like from it. Can be different from person to person, but I think this is the main uh, ideas that bring to the table and are really interesting. I want to say that Lem is not a, not a research project. It's not like some people did that and it's still in development. No, no, this is a usable product that can be used to day to day programming in a very good experience. This is not like, I want to clarify this because some people bring some uh, exploratory project. This is not that one. This is a finish. Well, finish in the way that uh, you can use it. It's not, uh, you know, have everything in place, so to say. So uh, let's continue. It's written 100% in common Lisp. Why I say this? Because Emacs is not 100% in Emacs Lisp. You have to uh, modify the C code. I think, um, well, if you, you don't have to, but if you want to change the internal, you do. I think um, that given that LEM does not care about the implementation of the language itself, so for example, LEM doesn't have to deal with how common list works. Uh, it just used the language, right? It's on top of the language, we can say that. When Emacs list, uh, is Emacs and Emacs list, so you have to, you have both in the same place, which is, well, it's a double-edged sword, right? Um, then you have the both similar to Emacs. You have end cursors and SDL2 front ends. One, one is uh, terminal based and the other is graphical using the SDL2 library, which you can do a lot of crazy things. Of course, it's meant to program games and stuff, but LEM uses and it works fairly well. You can program games if you want, not that you need to or anything, but we have Tetris, so there's that. <laughs> Um, also separate front-end and interface. So like I said, they have two, but you can create more. In the past had an Electron one, yeah, but it got abandoned for obvious reasons, I think. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this idea is taken from NeoVim that had a lot of front-ends, in fact. We don't have that many, we not that many people, we have two. That works fairly well. Uh, we have a superb development experience, thanks to Slime. Uh, so we have Micro. Um, which is a uh, slime version for LEM, basically. And um, slime is awesome, and micro is also awesome. So we have a very strong development experience uh, that we don't have for a, a list, so we, which I think is very important. If, if you want someone to develop packages or to use your tool, uh, to do your Emacs at least, you need to have a very good development experience. With, which enhance the 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 the, tool, the 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 extensions from the for the editor. So we have also been black integration. This for me was mostly mandatory because I I'm a Vivo mode user, and um, and I think it's really good. So because evil mode um, is very good, and the V mode, which is called even though it's more like V mode, it's called V mode. It's is written by Fukumachi-san, and uh, it's really good. Uh, so yeah, that's the thing that I think Lem brings to the table and that's really interesting. So I'm going to do a small demo of Lem, uh, as an Emacsing example. Um, and first the similarities, the nomenclature is very similar, mode, buffer, command, you know, and the commands are very similar in nature. It was written with Emacs, a new Emacs in mind, uh, to mimic a lot of things, which, I mean, I think Emacs, GNU Emacs is the best. Uh, Emacs implementation in that way, so why not just take what is working, right? Uh, it has similar command, uh, but flex- flexible to add other defaults ones. So um, it's not like Emacs that you have Emacs commands. You have lem have Emacs command by default, but you can easily change that with other default ones. 
right? It's like, a, you know, you can think of it like a major mode, right? More like a global mode, sorry. That uh, is a global mode of Emacs commands, right? something like that. And in general, the feeling is really close. So <laughs> you will tell that it's really close to how both works, similar commands, and uh, that, that, that shows. Differences. Uh, common list is not Emacs Lisp. It's similar in the surface, so it uses the fun, you know, half parentheses and yada yada, but it's not the same language, really, and sometimes you will find that the differences are substantial. Uh, the internals are completely different, of course, nothing, uh, well, completely. They have a buffer implementation and other things, but in general, yeah, aside from that, it's completely different. And it's true that GNU Emacs have a better documentation tutorial. So GNU Emacs, for me, I think it's the, one of the best documented software ever. Um, so we're trying to go there, but we're still not there. So um, let's do the demo. So to open LEM, uh, you compile it and then you have it available and you open them. As you can see, we have the temporal buffer. Um, in the top left is the mode, you know, the, not bomb, the, you know, the beam, insert, normal, visual. This is the V mode, right? In the top right corner, we have fundamental, which is the major mode, then pro edit, which is like the minor mode. But, you know, this is like the pro edit for, for, for Emacs. And, you know, in the top uh, left buffer, we have the, 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 buff, the, the current buffer. So let's open the, so MX. We all know how to do this. This is a command, like explode this command, right? open init file. This open the init file, which is in, in this directory, in the init. And as you can see, this is very similar, right? You define a command, which is not interactive. And then you get the buffer, right? This is a, some of my personal command. Let's go to the one that I just um, open init file, right? So this is a command that I, that I did, which is find file. This is very similar to MPIP, but just find file. As you can see, very similar. And this is the way that you program in LEM. So this is the major mode, which is uh, Lisp, that we see in the top uh, right. And we can connect, if we go, well, self connect. This is the prompt, this is the REPL. So if we uh, keep in mind that this is common list, so this has different things. So we have to go to the LEM package which is very important. This has namespaces, right? So it's not the same. And we can say, okay, go run buffer. And we get the buffer. We can explore everything that is in it, right? So we have all this stuff. This is, if you're familiar with slime or slide, this is, this is it. <laughs> it's just that. We can say um, uh, buffer, I think it's buffer name. Yes, and we can take the this and it will give you the name. So, as you can see, the development experience is really powerful. We can also Lisp scratch, which transform, so basically apply the major mode of Lisp to the temporary buffer. So this is very similar to, to, to Emacs. So let's go back to the theme. And I think that's it. Uh, thank you all very much for listening to me. I think I point out the Emacs in front of me is really interesting. Lisp is really good. The new Emacs is really good. And I think Lem is also pretty awesome. So thank you all very much. I'll be answering the question now and happy hacking.